Capital Convention 2011. This is our first time here, so uh, not, not first time DC, but th first time at this convention. So thank you very, very much for having us up here. Um, this is Nick, I'm Brian. Um, we're gonna do some dragons for you today, and we thought, uh, uh, we thought we'd start off maybe painting a couple on each other, and then take some turns and, um, and paint you guys in the audience and maybe take some requests. I mean, we'll, we'll paint a few that we got on, you know, on the t off the top of our head at first, and then, and then maybe take some requests for some stuff that you guys wanna see. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know where the uh, the dragon myths originated, but uh, uh, my my favorite authors say that it's a big conspiracy theory uh, because of uh, uh, the lower fourth dimension reptilian race, and uh, the the dragons is a big a big reference to that. But but I like them because uh, you can they're they're basically rainbow monsters. You can make them in any color. You can put all kinds of accoutrements on it. Um, you can ma make all kinds of tails and wings and stuff like that in there. Uh, well, uh, so uh, I guess uh, somebody liked, uh, liked the dragons we paint. That's why we're doing this dragon class. And uh, I, I think we're going to just try to go through the gambit and do a, a whole a bunch of different styles. We'll talk about the, the, uh, the styles that we're, that we're doing, but also we're going to try to make a dragon like in, in every different shape and form around the, he uh, the head. We uh, used to work at uh, Universal Studios Islands of Adventures. Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Lost Continent, where they had the dueling dragon roller coasters, which is now the Harry Potter world. But uh, they had dragons there. We had to paint dragons all the time. We had to paint our faces every day, paint something different. So we, so we literally practiced. We're like, okay, well, we'll do a dragon going this way. Tomorrow we'll do one going this way. T t the next day we'll have one right in the middle. That next day we'll have a dragon beard. Uh, next one will be a full face. So we've done it all these different ways. So I was in the uh, in the in the bathroom just earlier today, and uh, checking out my face, and uh, I was like, oh, I got to do a brand new one for the kid convention. And uh, maybe it's not brand new. Maybe you've seen this before. But a lot of times when I'm when I'm trying to figure out how to do this dragon uh, on a per uh, particular person who says they want one. I kind of go, I got to look at the features. If, if, uh, if the guy's got a beard, well, obviously I'm going to have to do some kind of dragon eye design. But if he's got this whole thing, like Brian has these really deep creases on his nasal labial <laughs> folds right here. So if I try to do some kind of design across his lip there, it's going to get a big wrinkle in there. You know? so, so, so I'm going to save some of those nice side designs for somebody else that doesn't quite have, you know, this kind of experience on his face. Uh, so, so, so I'm looking here, I'm like, how can I work with that anatomy there? So I'm looking at, I'm looking at these triangle cheeks. I'm like, that's what I need to do. I make, I got to make these two cheeks, the wings. So when he smiles, the dragon's going to flap its wings. So I'm going to paint this little head on this, on his, on his mouth right here. Especially because Brian loves to have his lips painted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're not they're not ticklish at all. I'm I'm usually like if somebody wants to paint my lips, I'm like just take your time, just get the pointiest, <laughs> stiffest bristle brush that you have, and just go for all kinds of detail, and then you know maybe just sketch something out on the rest of it. But spend most of your time <laughs> on my lips, please. Well the, well, the last dragon class we did, I, I have to make up for that. If somebody taped it, I don't remember what show it is, but it's I'm going to get it. I'm going to put it on YouTube. I was showing how to do the fastest full face dragon on the little kid, and I and I'm talking like this and talking and talking and I'm working up this dark green paint. I'm working it up, talking and talking and talking and pretty soon it's completely dry. You know, it's soaked with paint, but all dried out. I'm like, oh, uh, okay, now I'm gonna start painting. I'll start talking. So I go and dunk but it, it in but the it, water. But he's, he's still half paying attention or half talking, half paying attention what he's doing. So he pretty much dunks it like a donut, just <laughs> glue. <laughs> Rubs yeah. it around on the paint. Now it's just, it's about halfway soaked with water and just such Brimming. concentrated. Brimming with dark green. And meanwhile, they got the, the AV on and his face is like this big behind me, right? So as soon as I stick the sponge up to his eye. Dark green paint goes. And I'm like. Bleh. You know.
He he loses it. He he turns around. He sees you know my dark green teeth on the screen behind him. Starts starts laughing. Everybody else starts laughing too, and I start going off about the. This is this is when I wanted to talk to you guys about the amount of water that you need to put in your sponge before you start painting. It's very you know. In the meantime, you know it's spreading out. I'm yeah, I'm eating this stuff so. He promises today it's gonna be it's gonna be better. Redemption. Maybe not as funny. But it'll so definitely gonna, be so better. I'm start off with some green paint. Basically, uh, uh, this is the same way that I do like my tribal dragons, but the difference is is I'm gonna start with a, a mid tone. Uh, I I like to to add highlights to to my uh, my cheek art characters and shadows, so I try to go for for some kind of tone in the middle. I'm gonna make the dragon facing you uh, facing outwards in the middle and so he can talk and flap his wings. So uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna kind of go for this, uh, uh, this kind of like a, sn a snake looking head. Uh, he's gonna have these arched eyes. And one way to keep everything going symmetrical is uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna alternate strokes and I'm gonna put maybe one or two strokes on one side and then put one or two on the other side to match. That way I keep going back and forth, keeps everything easy, even. Because if I work a whole bunch on one side and then I try to match it over here, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be more uh, difficult to keep, it, uh, to, to keep it symmetrical. And there, there's that. Yeah, not too, not too ticklish. And so far, so good. Yeah, and you see, he's kind of being quick and firm with his brush. So that's uh, that's uh, that's going to be his head, and I'm going to hook the wings up here. Going with the anatomy there. And, and when I do a, a dragon's wings, I gotta, I gotta, I, I very much keep in mind like human anatomy or any kind of animal anatomy. I, I study the human anatomy because animals are, are different. So when I'm, when I'm thinking about a dragon wing, instead of just, just you know, putting this stick and maybe some rays like a bat wing or whatever, I'm doing all the parts. I'm making sure I'm getting a shoulder, I'm getting a bicep, I'm getting a forearm. And then the fingers like coming out of the tip of the forearm, that's like the rays that the, the, the dragon wing connects. So, so far, there's his forearm. I got a really, really long forearm. Then I got his, his bicep right here, which is also a little bit distorted. And then next I got to do his, uh, his shoulder muscles here. It's kind of like, uh, like graffiti. You ever see the graffiti on the, on the brick walls? where uh, it's a word, but it's hard to see what word it is because it's been pulled and stretched and woven and stuff has been stuck onto it. That's kind of like what our monsters are. It's just people, but you kind of stretch out the ears and stretch out the arms and the legs. You can twist it and pull it all out. So it's like, man, I don't recognize that as a person, but that's, that's the anatomy that we're most familiar with, so. All right. so. Uh, uh, also, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar with your, your teardrop uh, strokes. We've got that pull and plop and then the plop and pull. And everybody says, well, which one do you prefer? Which one's like, which one's fastest? Well, uh, I, I say both because now the one, I've, I've, I've taken this stroke and I've flipped over this, this spike here. Here's for the camera. So this would be the plop and pull. But now here, here, comes the, here comes the pull and plop. This is why I like to do the dragon wings like this, because then I can really pull these down quick. And then on this side, try to make this. See how he painted on it, my left side first, and then he's copying it on the right side, because he's right-handed. So it's easier to paint the uh, this side of my face for him because he's kind of going away, whereas here it's a little cramped up. So he's painting on this side first, so it's easier to copy it on the on the easier side. 
So now I want to make this dragon's underbelly a, a different color, and, you know, kind of like a snake. You know, they've got that really cool pattern on their back, and then on the mm -hmm. on the bot, you know, on their on their belly, they kind of have those long, flat scales. I kind of like to model my my dragons, cr crocodilian snakes, and using different reptiles, so you you know, for influence. So this is going to be his head. This is going to be his wings. I'm going to make the, his neck and his belly come under here, but I think I'm just going to have him like perched on the edge of his chin now that I think about it, um, instead of painting down his neck or whatever. So I'm just gonna, ha I'm just gonna have his claws here, uh, uh, down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna make him uh, uh, three toes. One, two, three, one, two, three. Like that, yeah. And, uh, and now I'll, I'll paint that underbelly. <laughs> And I think uh, another trick I like to do with this makeup is uh, I, I like to mix the colors. So it isn't like my palette, it's a very, very uh, like simple palette. Sorry, thanks for putting your sponges so nice like that. But, uh, I'm gonna trash it. But this makes it really, really simple. This is the, the this is, we carry the whole thing in this bag or a backpack. And as you see here, we got, we got multiple colors per, per disc. Like if you cut your cakes in half and you have one light green and one dark green half, then if you take your sponge and you rub it on top, you've got a medium green. So in the space that it, I usually have one green, I've, got, I've actually got three now. I got light if I want it, I got dark if I want it, and if I mix the two together, I got a medium. So in this little bit of space, I got all this stuff. But also what's cool about, uh, about having this here, it's like I, I like to mix these colors a little bit. I'm just gonna take some, some white and mix it on top of my green. And this doesn't ruin my green at all because it doesn't really soak it all in there. But now I've got this different shade a lot brighter uh, sh shade of, of, of green here, and that's what I'm going to do the, uh, the belly scales with. There's that. And, uh, and then, uh, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and make, the, make his wings that same, uh, that same shade. So I'm going to take this, and to make the, the wings way, uh, as wicked as possible, I want them to have as much angle as possible, and I want it to be as fast as possible. So instead of just doing these webs and connecting these bat wing webs, you know, and then have that whole wing to fill up, I'm going to really give it a, a high arch. So I have, so one, it looks really, uh, looks really wicked, but it's also got way less to, uh, to fill in. Also, I got the, uh, the consistency of my paint is super, super important too. If you notice, I was able to fill in that entire wings with one brush load. I, I so pay attention to the, uh, the amount of water I have on my brushes and, and on my sponges. If you have less, you'd be surprised, like if you go for like less water, like how much you can stretch the paint. If you have a drier paintbrush, you can like feather colors easily, uh, more easily. You can do a blending with your brush. Um, I, I usually try to use as much as I can out of every brush load. Once I load it up and I, and you'll notice that, you know, Nick, Nick might paint fast. He might be dunk, dunking his brush fast. He might be loading it up, but he, he does take time to, uh, to figure out how much water he's got, what his consistency on his brushes. That's where he slows down. 
and he's going to paint the things on his uh, on my face first that need a lot of paint but then as that paint starts to dry and run out well then he starts moving on to those medium details and then and then finally uh, while his, while the while the brush is almost all the way dried out and doesn't have any paint then he starts doing some you know some of that light shading stuff but keeping the brush on the face for as long as possible as opposed to going back and forth and dipping it in. Uh, the more time you spend on the face, then, well, then the more stuff you can get done and the quicker you are. Uh, another way that I, that, I'm, that I go faster on my face paints too is I try to like economize uh, my, my colors. I want to get uh, all, uh, like the next color I'm going to use is white. So I'm going to do all my white right now so I don't have to go back and paint another color and then go back and get some more white and go back and forth like that. I'm going to make all the, uh, the spines coming out of him, uh, his teeth, and the highlights with the white. So I'm loading up the brush. I'm going to make a few of these spines coming out of these wings, his claws. Some horns. And like I promised the highlights. See, I'm running out of paint right now. So now I can just brush some nice highlights on top of his muscles here. I always kind of put the highlights in the, on the same place. I imagine that the, uh, the light source is, uh, is is coming from uh, the sun, from up above. So if, if, I, if I'm drawing an arm right here and I wanna highlight the arm, I'm gonna put the highlight on top of the arm. So it, it, it's gonna be like in this area here. So always highlights are gonna go like on top of things. I'm gonna give them some nostrils here. And get this scale thing going. It's, it's almost like sunburn. Like the top of your forehead, the top of your cheeks, the top of your nose, maybe your lips, the top of your shoulders. You know, uh, that, you know what, what normally would get sunburn on you, that's, that's, that's where my highlights go. All right, last, I'm gonna do the teeth. This is, you know what? Because of that whole fiasco last time, I'm gonna let him do his own damn teeth. All right, cool. <laughs> always makes his teeth whiter. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's ticklish even for me. But uh, I mean, hopefully the illusion is going to be after this is when he smiles and stuff that that's going to be the teeth of the dragon too. Good. <laughs> yep. Does it work? Does it work? Yeah, it's working. Let's get some dark green. Uh, no, I'm going to go for the deep. I'm going to tr try to make this kind of fast. Okay, go for it. I'm going to make some red eyes, red and green, lots of contrast. And uh, dragons definitely do look scarier with like smaller eyes. So, uh, and also to let those eyes dry, just in case I want to do any kind of pupils and stuff. That's like the last thing I'm going to paint as far as the uh, as far as the details go. And and now all I'm going to do is outline it. Uh, a word on outlining. Once again, the consistency of your makeup is going to stretch your line really really long. You want, to, you want to load your brush up full all the way to the hilt. You want to have this nice creamy consistency. But when you're doing your lines, you want to drag the very, very tip of the brush along your surface. If you're just dragging the very tip, get it? Dragging the very tip. Then you're going to be able to make such a much longer line and get a lot done where as soon as you start pressing down and, and getting your br the bristles of your brush all the way smashed, it's going to pull so much more paint out of your paintbrush that you're going to get a, a much shorter line. Another, while he's outlining this, I'll, I'll tell you another thing he does while he's outlining is uh, he's got his eye. You want to do... No, go, go ahead, go ahead. Well, he's got his eye in front of the brush. You know how like when you're driving your motorcycle, you don't look at your tire and you definitely don't look in the ditch. You're looking down the road, and the further down the road you look, then the less you have to adjust. 
you know, but you never look in the ditch because then you're going to go in the ditch. So you keep your eye on the road and that's where you stay. You keep your eye further down the road and then you have to adjust less. So same way with your paintbrush. If you're looking and you're doing eyeliner on somebody and you're looking at their eyeball, your paintbrush is going to go right in their eye. Don't look at their eye. Look, look where your brush is going to go. If you're, if you're doing a stitch from this hole to this hole, you don't put your eye on the tip of your brush and then watch it go over to this hole. You put your paintbrush here, you look at this hole here, and your, your brush will automatically go to that. So if you're doing an outline, like let's say you're doing a circle, my eye isn't here going around where my paintbrush is. My eye is here. And my brush is following my eye all the way around. Make sense? Yeah. All right, here it goes real fast. Here's another really uh, cheap trick. If you really paint a really cool spiral on your hand and you want to save it, you can just take a baby wipe. Uh, it is a really nice spiral. It? It's kind of like it's kind of like heart shape for Valentine's Day. See there? And then when the baby wipe dries, you can you can go take it home and frame it and put it on. The floor. Yeah. So I, I did that one time. My, my daughter painted my face, and then I took the whole thing off with my with a baby wipe and then let it dry and it's like, oh, oh, oh. Hurry about like this thing. I can't wait to do yours. I'm going to do a, <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I just, uh, I just got that, uh, Nick got my daughter, uh, how to train your dragon on DVD. And at the end of the DVD, they have a how to draw toothless instructional DVD on the back of it. So we all drew toothless. So I was going to, Show you how to draw. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Does anybody like it? Yeah. Fantastic movie. It's a normal Pixar, you know, feel good about yourself, you know, one of those movies. But it's all dragons and Vikings fighting. So it's like I could I could probably nail a pretty good uh, pretty good toothless. But uh, after doing that video, now I now I really know how to do them. I'm like oh yeah, I've never face painted them. I try to give it a shot. Well, before you paint that on me, is there anybody out there that's really missing all their teeth? I mean, I hate, <laughs> I hate to miss that opportunity. <coughs> Might be somebody better for the job. Yeah, but do they really want to hear? Hey, look, it's toothless. <laughs> <laughs> probably over that. Oh yeah, it's a pretty good line, right? Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! Oh yeah, yeah. Those of you guys uh, keeping keeping up on uh, the latest gossip in uh, the face painting world, uh, Nick and I had some great news to announce this month. Uh, we, we've been in a uh, a long legal battle with Wolf Brothers Face Art and Effects, and we have now settled amicably. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so, so, so there's no more face painting lawsuit. Yay! Yay. Yeah, I really like what that uh, John said about got to make friends with your um, with your competitors. I've been preaching that for years, but it's nice to hear somebody else say that. It's totally true. All right, here's this. So it's it's nice not to have any competitors now. Uh, Nick Nick and I are uh, uh, working for ourselves these days. We don't have any vases, or actually, we have a whole ton of them. There you go. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> work, work for anybody and everybody now. All right, one last step. But kind of not. The wings are kind of screwed up a little bit. It's okay. It's face painting. What do you want? <laughs> what do you want for five bucks? <laughs> Just send me thirty-nine ninety-five. 
<laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to see where face painting gets in the next 10 years, you know, because I've seen it over the last 10 years. If you go look at like Snazaru website or something 10 years ago, woo, face painting has come a long way. Or you go to, you go to one of these, uh, You go, you go to one of these conventions and you see great stuff all over the place. I just remember 10 years ago, you go all over the place and you'd see a couple good people, you know, and now it's just everybody's awesome. And But I think there's a, a ceiling, though, I think, to how good we can get because we're, we're speed painters. Like all my favorite artists, I don't know, they never print that stuff in the magazines when they do interviews with us because all my favorite artists get to work on it again tomorrow and the next day, and the next day, you know, it, it, they, they don't paint on people like we do. We paint on people, so you only get five minutes. Or, I don't know, if you're doing a whole person, maybe get a few hours, but how long can somebody go without taking a shower? So we're all pretty much speed painters, and how fast and how good can we actually get if we only get a few minutes or a few hours to do it? I don't know, it'll be interesting. Well, um Okay, well, you've got to do the, the smile thing. Oh. So keep your lips closed, but just bring your cheeks up. Is his wings flapping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, toothless, toothless. Oh, yeah, and then I, I want to do that. Uh, I'll do a toothless over here. And then, uh, what is it, Bone Snapper, the legend of the Bone Snapper? Snatcher, the bone snatcher. There is a, uh, a, a dinosaur or a dragon skeleton, like almost like a dragon zombie skeleton in the, uh, the extra DVD included uh, thing. So I wanted to show you a quick dragon skeleton. I'll do that and then I'll see if I can knock out this uh, how to train your dragon here too. Uh, but first I'm gonna do this skeleton and I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a smiling skeleton too, and I'm gonna to, I'm gonna do it on his lips first. I'm gonna do it on this side, I think, and then I'll do the toothless on that side. Yeah, that'll be, that'll work. And I'm gonna do it on his on his uh, mouth first. And you know how like um, and I, I kind of do them like dinosaur skeletons. I don't know if you ever seen a T-Rex skeleton at the uh, museum or something. There's a real nice museum here in uh, Washington D.C. I think we saw some great dinosaur skeletons there. But they all got the they got the big eye holes, and then they got like a big hole for sinus. like their sinus hole, and then they got their big nostril hole. Museum, Native American Museum. No. Museum of Natural History. Natural History. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Na Native. I don't think there were dinosaurs while the Native Americans were here. <laughs> well, they were the original Native, Native Americans. <laughs> the dinosaurs were. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do it like that. I'm gonna do a, an eye hole a uh, nasal passage hole and a nostril hole. So almost like three circles right on top of his lip. There's one, there's two, and there's three. And then I'm gonna connect them so it all looks like one thing here. And then I'm going to uh, give them some horns, and uh, uh, horns um, are kind of like, I don't know, like in my face designs, I usually use the very center point right between your eyes as a focal point, so all my, my girly swirly masks all kind of flow from the, between the eyes, and my Spider-Man webs go flow from between the eyes, and if I'm doing like a boy's face, my, my mean eyebrows flow from right between the eyes, and my wrinkles flow, and my the bags under my eyes and my, my cheek, my nasal labial fold, my nose, everything just kind of flows from right between the eyes. And the same way with my dragons, I think the, the dragon's horns would probably come from right between the eyes. And maybe if it had those fins or some spikes or spines coming out of the rest of his face, I think all of that stuff would kind of radiate from right between the eyes too. So I'm gonna try to do a couple horns here from right between the eyes. Like that, and then I'm going to give him a jawbone, and I'm going to do it kind of like a human jawbone, only I'm going to extend it. Since he's got a long face, I'll make the jawbone longer, but I'm going to give him this part here with the, uh, the mandibular arch. You know where your temporal muscle comes down and attaches to your jaw here, and then you got the pivot point back here, and there's that arch right in between here. That's your mandibular arch. I'm going to put that in the jaw too, just to 
see if we can make it uh, kind of anatomically correct. And I'll give them a nice square jaw. I still study anatomy and physiology, but uh, no, we, we didn't, outside of high school, no. Cover, your, cover your ears, kids. Yeah, we were, uh, we were uh, teaching the, the face painting class and teaching the parts of the skull and stuff because we were doing, because everybody basically, you're painting on a skull. Every face has a skull underneath it, and that is what makes the things stick out and sink in because there's a skull underneath with some skin on top. So we were teaching this class for a long time, and every time we'd say, you know that one bone that kind of goes from your eye? Like, like if, you, if, your if you feel your eye right here, you can feel this one bone here. So we were like, this, this, we sound like retards. We need to find, <laughs> uh, we, did, we sound worse. We, uh, so we needed to figure out the names of it. So we went and looked up the names of all the bones, and we're like, you're kidding me. Zygomatic? Man, is that even right? Mandibular arch, all right, mandibular arch, mandibular arch, mandibular arch. So then the next day we come to class, and the mandibular arch <laughs> is right here beneath, underneath the zygomatic. Basic, basically, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, anatomy, yes, but, but uh, if you go to your, any bookstore right now, there's, a, there's an anatomy book on sale in the bargain for, bin. For eight bucks. Every bookstore has got one. I don't know why nobody buys those things, but nobody does. And maybe it's uh, you know drawn, or maybe it's CGI, or maybe it's photos, or a combination of the three. But uh, um, yeah, yeah, learning your face painting. I think that's uh, that's most important thing to do uh, to learn about your canvas as well as your designs and your materials, uh, and learn about yourself. That could be the reason that we're here in the first place, as far as relative universe to figure out who we are. So studying about yourself, studying who you are, your skull, and all the anatomy. I don't know if there's anything more important. Yeah. So I've been doing airbrushing on metals and things of that sort, and I've got all these DVDs on how to airbrush the uh, human anatomy, skulls, etc. And there's a few of those guys who've been doing it for years who encourage people to learn about what you're exactly talking about where the cavities in the skull, the uh, different little holes in the different areas, and um, how to make the teeth look more realistic rather than just kind of kindergarten doing by a first grader or whatever. I mean, give it that more of a, uh, more of a realistic look. At least they know what they're doing, the name of it, and how to Contours uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, we, that's that's how uh, Nick learned how to do uh, the the real fire, the airbrushing fire. Is getting one of those car <laughs> DVDs, how to paint real fire. It's so like, I, uh, you want to learn how to paint on somebody? Oh well, just get a. It's the same same way as paint with a car. So uh, so I added some spikes on there because well, dragons are spiky, and usually kids check on that. They're like spikes check, wings check. Okay, um, for his for his uh, backbone and vertebrae, I'm just going to use the side of my brush and kind of plop it in a line here. Plop, 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 plop. And kind of pretend I got this spine here going. All right. I got that, and I'll do some rib bones here. Like that, and maybe add a couple, uh, I don't know, maybe an arm bone or wing bone. And my bones, I'm kind of doing those with teardrops, you know, doing the... Uh, what about the baby backs? Did you, did you put those, the baby back ribs? The baby back ribs? <laughs> yep, I'll, I'll do some of those. Um, I kind of do, do the bones like teardrops, where I'm doing one teardrop and then put one right next to it, so it kind of makes a heart. And then coming back over and going the opposite way and making another heart attached to it, and that's my bone. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll do that for his arm here. And then, you know, your tibia and your fibula, they're long and kind of interwoven here, so I can probably just do a couple lines here and 
for his fingers. I'll just do some little teardrops like that. And let's see here. I'll do a, a dragon tail and I'll do some of those baby back ribs. Put some spines down his back maybe. And, and that's the great thing about uh, uh, bones and fossils, doing fossil faces is, uh, well, you never find a complete fossil. So I don't even have to do like his back legs or anything like that. And I'll, I'm just going to uh, finish it up and I'm going to do a little shadow underneath everything so it stands out a little more so you guys can see it from back there. And the shadows um, are kind of like, instead of outlining everything that I drew, I'm just, just like those highlights were on top of all the things that Nick painted, I'm doing a, uh, a little black line underneath everything that I painted. And that's my shadow. It's, it's quicker than doing, uh, than outlining every single bone. And it's also, uh, I don't know. It looks. I think it looks nicer because it just. So it's. It's not as muddy. Uh, it looks more three D because only one side of it is shadowed. Uh, if 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 the person you're painting with these skeletons are really dark skin, I don't even. I don't even bother. But uh, if they got really light skin, well, one you could do. I guess you could do the bones in black and be kind of like a tribal bone skeleton and that would show up on really light skin or dark brown or blue or green or red I mean I guess face paint you can make it any color you want right but I did them in white and I'm gonna outline it in black just so that they really pop out more okay and I'll give him some teeth too I mean, even though he can smile, you can see his teeth. There we go. Let me see if I can do this toothless. And this toothless, it's a pretty much a black dragon with a blue highlight. Yeah, does, any, does anybody want a toothless instead of Nick? Since I already painted this thing on there. Come on up. Sure. And I'm going to see if I can remember it. I only, paint, I only drew him once for the DVD, but I think I can, I think I can remember go, how he goes. You always do a triceratops. Oh, that's oh. Dinosaurs is next door. Here, we're, doing, we're doing dragons here. OK, let's see here. Um, hey, you know, uh, uh, Brian actually entered a uh, pun contest. They had uh, uh, the newspaper sponsored, and they said, uh, write down um, you know, your, your 10 best puns. So he, uh, he sent in his list in hopes to, uh, to win the prize. And he was hoping that, you know, that one of them would, uh, would actually be the best out of the contest. But uh, uh, no pun intended. Okay, when you're drawing your tooth list, start off with the circle. <laughs> right? That's going to be his head. And uh, Disney characters, they, will, they like to keep everything really, really simple and really bold so that you remember them. So they're really strong characters. So I'm going to start his, his head out here with a circle. And then the next thing he's got are his ears. And he's got these big, like, rabbit ears that kind of stick out. That's another really nice feature on that that, that really make him recognizable. So we've got these big rabbit ears coming here. And then he's also got these horns that kind of come out to the side here. Almost like Bugs Bunny cheeks, maybe. So I got that going there. And then he's got a real big fat neck. So I'll do that here, that there, like that. <laughs> right? So far, so good. And then this is going to be his leg. And this one is going to be 
his back leg, like that. Looks like a what? A llama. A llama. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, man, I'm going to do this thing, and you guys are going to be like, holy cow, he nailed that guy perfect. I can tell already. Okay. So uh, here's that. And then I'm going to fatten up that leg. And I'm going to fatten up that leg. And then I'm going to fatten up that leg there. And I'm going to fill all this in. So it kind of looks like, it does look like a rabbit. Like a rabbit snowman. <laughs> raven, raven, rabbit, or something? No, I haven't seen that. Okay, there we go. Rabbit snowman. <laughs> Wait for it. Here it comes. I'm telling you. Then I'm going to do. Then I'm going to do his wing. There. On that side. But I'm just going to do a little wing kind of behind him on the other side here to represent this wing, but it's going to be behind him, kind of like silhouette. And then I'm going to do his tail. And that's going to come out here and loop around like that. And then he's got those wings on the end of his tail. Remember he had the broken tail? How to Train Your Dragon? Toothless. He was a no. He was a night night terror. Night terror. God, I can't believe it. Was it night terror? Yeah. yeah. They were the worst ones. Right. No, the worst one was the red death. The six-eyed giant one. But yeah, 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 yeah. He was the hardest, the rarest, the most coolest catch. Okay, here we go. I got him going here. Now I'm going to do his eyes. Now that his head is dried a little bit, in his eyes he's got those. Big, almost almost round, but slightly almond-shaped eyes, and they're right down there near the tip of his nose. So let me see if I can nail this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do them white first so you can see them. Definitely getting less. Rabbit snowman. Okay, I'm gonna do some light blue highlights on him while his eyes are drying so you can see what's going on here. This could be the name of this video, How to Paint Your Dragon. Oh, <laughs> cute. And then we're going to get sued. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. All we will get is a cease and desist letter. And then we'll just start painting Iron Man or somebody, something. Somebody just wrote me a letter and said, uh, hey, uh, I want to paint, I can't remember what it was, something like Tinkerbell or something on my backdrop. I've got a tent or something like that, and I want to paint a big Tinkerbell on the backdrop. What's the, what's the, law, what's the law of the... Uh, of the copyright infringement. Well, you're not selling Tinkerbell backdrops, right? Right? You just you just put putting a big painting in your tent. I said, well, to do it right, definitely get an opaque projector, so you get the lines right. <laughs> and two, if any of these companies ever have a problem of any kind of your copyright infringement, if there's a question about it, they'll send you a letter. It's called. It'll say right at the top, cease and desist. And if they send it, and if they send it. that. Then you know to start. I have a I know people that make a living off of knocking stuff off. They'll make like here's a the new crystal shard kryptonite from Smallville, and they'll make this clear, translucent green crystal shard, and it'll look exactly like the kryptonite, and they'll put it on eBay, and they'll say kryptonite, kryptonite shard from Smallville, and they'll sell this thing for a couple of months. And then Warner Brothers will send him a letter that says, Cease and desist. That's when he starts making the mummy mask. 
And then he opens it in like that until he gets his letter. And then he starts doing Freddy Krueger masks. Yeah. And, and he, does li he does small batches. So even when he's stuck with them, it's like, well, whatever you've got left. He's not stuck. He's The reason he does them in the first place is because he wants one. He's like, I want the green well, goblin mask from Spider-Man. Make this one for myself. You got to sculpt it and make the mold anyway. So why not burn this mold out until they find Put out? Put them on eBay, and then somebody else can pay you for all your materials and all your time that took you to make one. And then as soon as they say, well, you can't do that anymore, well, then you stop doing it. But you got yours, and you sold another one or two. So you're able to, uh, about that. That's pretty awesome. Hey, there you go. Look at that. Is that him or what? That's cute. That's him, isn't it? Pretty good? Close enough? Close enough. Okay, what ails? Right, who, who wants a full, full face dragon? Anybody yeah. want a big one? Big one? She wants the neck. I love those people that say I don't care. Do all kinds of stuff with that. <laughs> I should have done my nose. Oh, Mom, I didn't. I should have done my nose. Okay. Thank you. For sure. You have to see the leg. No, you don't. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Would you stop yanking my limbs? Oh, and this next one's very gonna nice. Be, I'm going to do a full face very dragon. Nice. And uh, this one, like a uh, cheek art, it really is like microsurgery. I charge extra for cheek art because it does take, it takes longer. It's more, it, it's crisper. It's more concise. It's, uh, you have to be like more accurate with it. And if the person's moving around and stuff, it's, it's harder to do. So if I, sometimes the, the, the full face dragons takes less time because you can make much broader strokes. They're cooler looking because you can add all kinds of uh, uh, highlights and, and shadows. So to sell this, I always say, when they say, well, I want a dragon. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I'm kind of bored. I, I, want to, I want to pull some people in there. I'll sell them. I'll say, do you want a dragon? You want to be a dragon. <laughs> and they usually go, I want to be a dragon. Whew, good, because I didn't want to sit there and make all these little teeny tiny scales and stuff like that. It's like, uh, how about a couple big scales? I'm going to do this. Uh, so she's got a gray sweater on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to coordinate and make, make a, a gray dragon. And since she's got these uh, zebra strike things going on there, I'm going to make it a zebra striped dragon. <laughs> what? You guys, well, you guys have seen dragons? You know what they look like? No such thing as a gray zebra striped dragon? Mm -hmm. That's what. since it's a girl, I'm going to make it a hot chick zebra striped <laughs> dragon. <laughs> all right, but first, I'm going to start the same way I start all of my other dragons here. I'm going to, I'm going to bring these, uh, the, the, the brow of, uh, of this dragon up at 45 degree angles coming up from the, from the center of the eyes. Right, right. We went over that. And then uh, all, all the rest of the spines, it's going to put some more spines coming out of the face too. And of course, those are going to radiate from right between the eyes as well. So he's got one coming out of the corner of the eye. Looks like he's got two more rays coming out from right between the eyes. And then he's filling all that in. All right, filling in the nose. Pretty much. Filling in the brow, kind of like attaching those spines like with a little web, you know, like you're doing Spider-Man and, and the web comes in like that, not like a flower, you know. If, you, if your Spider-Man looks like a flower, your webs are the wrong way. <laughs> the other way. So opposite of a flower. Flower man, flower man. <laughs> That's the next class. Uh, let's see, a chin. Oh, it's a hot chick dragon. Chin, no chin. Uh, yeah, we'll put, we'll put a chin on her. How's a full body dragon next? That is not this convention, unfortunately. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna face paint here because face paint is for everybody, and that's that's what I think that's one of the things I really love about face painting is it is all inclusive. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, where you live or what color you are what's your, or what's your education, what well, what your sexual orientation, what your 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 religious background. None of that stuff matters. All you need is a face, and pretty much everybody's got a face. Uh, 
Uh, there are other things that are not all inclusive that I just can't get behind, you know, like, you know, exclusive club or a, I, you know, I think this and only these people get to go here and these people don't get to go. And I don't know, I can't get behind that. But face painting, I like that. Uh, like, you know, full body dragons. Eh, I don't know. I do it. I do it. But uh, it's kind of like adult entertainment. You can't do it everywhere. It does, you know, some people say, oh, that's, you know, against my beliefs. Some people say, oh, that's against the law. Stuff like that. Uh, some people don't like it. I, like me, I, I can't be a body painting model. Nobody wants to see that. Neck, <laughs> neck, neck up is good. So I'm excluded. I can't be, I can paint, but I can't be a model. I could, but mm, nah. So, but, but face painting, oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm all about it. Well, one, I, I'm, I'm doing the eye shadow. The, the, the eyes are what's going to make your dragon hot or not. It's all about the eye shadow. Right, and, and girls, let's face it, they want to be women. When you have your face painting board up here, they never pick the cute little one that's painted on the girl down at the bottom of the sign. They pick the one that the girl's got the eyeliner and the pretty eye design, you know, the pretty girl on your sign, or the girl that's, you know, painting. I want to be her, or I want to, I want what that girl's got on right there, because girls want to be women. So explain where I put these Just like boys want to be men. So she kind of, he kind of did uh, some black eyeshadow there, kind of like, uh, kind of like a cat, where he's continuing this uh, line that comes all the way uh, along the eyelashes here, and he's kind of continuing this up like that, just to raise her eyes up a little bit, kind of like cat light. And then he's highlighting right on top of her eyebrow here to, to give her eye a little bit more arch. Um, kind of like women's makeup, sometimes they highlight uh, their, 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 their ethmoid, their bone, eye bone, what do you call this? The, uh, zygomatic. the zygomatic process, there you go. Highlight the zygomatic process right under there just to give her eye a little bit more arch. So uh, also where, where he shaded underneath, you know, those spines, he also put a highlight right on top of them and did it in white. Uh, he kind of mixed up that white to get it thick. So when he stippled on top, you could see all the texture of the sponge when he stippled on top with that. Uh, and then now, of course, he's going he's gonna to outline it with his number three round brush. I'm not sure what the brand is, but it's pointy. Um, <laughs> the bris bristles are stiff. Often people say, what kind of brush are you using? Pointy, this one's yellow, or that one's clear handled. I think I have some black and blue handled ones too. I tell you the brand, but pointy is really important for me. Uh, I like stiff bristles. Some people like those real soft bristles because they get their swirls and their curls and their teardrops better with that. Not me, I like the stiff bristles. I feel like I got more control. I can sketch stuff out like a pencil and just use the very tip of the brush if I need to get some really fine details. And then of course, if I need a, a thicker line, then I can uh, apply more pressure. Do you get kids complaining, ow, that hurts? No, I have a very light touch um, when I paint. A, and actually, where'd she go? What would you say on my on my pressure when it, when it, when I painted you? Was it was it firm or or would you say it was a very light touch? Very light touch, and that's what I do when I when when I when I when I got the kids coming up on their on my seat on my high chair, and I usually have a, a, a high chair like this, or I have a, a director's chair, something like that. Um, I never pick the kids up. I spot them, maybe put my hand on their back, to let them know, hey, if you fall back, I'm not, you know, you're gonna go. But really. Mm, five buck face paint isn't worth my back, so uh, they, they can either crawl up there and I'll go, come on, I was jumping off a roof when I was your age. <laughs> or, hey mom, you can give him a hand if he can't get up there on his own. Well, I, I gotta stir my paint right here. And, uh, uh, and then when, once, once they get in the chair, um, like Nick, you see his hands on top of her head there. That's, that's my chance to like brush their bangs out of their head, uh, you know, out of their face a little bit. But it's also kind of petting them, kind of like, like, look, I got this nice soft touch. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to give you the claw. I've gotten that before. and I've gotten that before from somebody here. And I'm not going to mention any names, but that ain't fun. So I don't, I don't do that. Uh, I, I give them a, I, I do a real nice soft touch. I also have a very soft voice when I speak to them too. 
uh, you know, to further let them know that I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not as scary as I look. What is that under her nostrils? Like, is that the eyes? Uh, no, those are the, those are her new nostrils. Oh. <laughs> yeah, re repainted her nostrils. Yeah. She is one hot chick dragon. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it, Boris. Yeah, I don't put all kinds of wrinkles in the uh, in the hot chick dragon. And uh, some other uh, some other uh, characteristics of the hot chick dragons, of course, is hot pink lips. And last but not least, got to do the zebra stripe. <laughs> and uh, uh, also some of the, um, I'm going to do the uh, eyelashes. All right, because all the girls want is eyelashes. They're going to look in the mirror, they're going to be like, lipstick, check. Eyelashes, check. <laughs> Glitter, check. They don't care what else is on there. Yeah, some some people are surprised they're a kit. Like I, I, I have a sponge for every color, one of those half wedge sponges, you know. So the the pottery sponges, whatever brand, I don't know, a bunch of makeup companies put these things out. Uh, I can get them to at Michaels in the pottery section and cut them in half. But I like them. I like these firm too, like my uh, my sponges, and that way I don't have to smush it. I can just use the pressure of the sponge to get it on there. And then a number three round brush. I got. I got four brushes here, but actually, I'm only going to use one this weekend. Good job. Oh, I'm worried you moved too much. Okay, that works. Walk this way. Okay, sorry, they didn't have to flush up. Yeah, I don't know as far as hot goes. It's a little gray, maybe smoking. Smoking. Did you know you didn't put any color right here above her eyes? She already had it on. Yeah, he incorporated yeah, like that. You left eyeshadow. Or yellow. <laughs> I, I, put some, I put some highlights above, yeah, and I, I put the eyeliner on. What's that? Sure. I left my Zoom camera in my room, so yeah. I, didn't, I thought it was in my purse. Cheese. Thank you. I'm going to get your picture to it. It's not taken back at the back of the room. Cheese. <laughs> oh, too, too wide. Okay. Come on, Brad. I'm coming. Cheese. Right, who's, who's, who's next? No, no, only the willing and the conscious. And this doesn't look willing. I mean, I'm no expert at sign language, but I think that says no. Come on up. No, I got two verse. Two chairs and two two at Yep. Yep. There's a seat right there. You're next. Okay, now, what, what are we doing now? S scary? Full face scary. Full face scary? Oh boy. Yeah. Pink? Blood coming out everything. <laughs> I'm not what scary. about the side? coming out the, the nose? Side view one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, this one's going to be a side view scary dragon, and I'm going to do it in hot pink to match her outfit. Is that cool with you? That's fine. Woohoo! Like so, uh, so my, my pink, I got a half uh, neon uh, black light reactive hot pink cake and half of it is a uh, Pepto uh, Pepto pink or uh, bubblegum bubblegum bubble pink and and that way if she's got some of this hot stuff in there I can match that if she's got more pastel I can match that or I can swirl the two together and get a, a Pepto pink that's got a little more punch to it Pepto pink with punch <laughs> I like doing that too. Uh, another reason, like with my yellow, I got a half yellow and half neon yellow. My orange, I got a half orange, half neon orange. Because, uh, I don't know, the regular colors are just too dull for me, but the neon colors are translucent. They don't go on good. Uh, like the yellow is like too greeny, and they're just, 
transparent and just aren't that nice to work with. But if you swirl the two colors together, uh, it, it lays on a real nice, nice, nice base, nice foundation, very opaque, but it also has a little more color to it, a little more punch. Okay, so uh, a lot of times, you know, Dragon's got those real long snouts, so uh, sometimes when I have something that I'm painting like a Malaysian taper or an elephant or, or something that has a, you know, big long face, a wolf or something like that, I'll paint it on the side and make them facing the other way. So instead of having to paint this trunk or this snout or stu stuff where, right where your mouth and your nose are and your eyes are, oh, I can just paint it on the side of the cheek. So I'll base it out here. Okay, you guys seen that? See that profile there? What's cool about this, the, doing these reverse things, not only does it get uh, people's attention, like when, when, when I'm at a gig, like I used to paint in the theme parks, that's, that's what I cut my teeth on. And uh, when it was dead, you'd have to like drum up business. So you'd have to kind of bait, bait the water a little bit. You'd have to paint something really, really weird, either on yourself or on other people, so they see it and, it, and it, they're really like, whoa, what is, what is that? And maybe they won't order it, like the, maybe that's not what they get, but they'll be like, okay, this guy's got skills, so he, if, if he can paint this cool, uh, you know, backwards dragon, he could probably do a pretty decent job at, at Spider-Man, and that's, and that's what we want to get, you know, the kid. So, uh, but this one, so this one is cool because, uh, because the, the dragon is facing the opposite direction as your nose, um, the eyes like kind of going in a different direction. So if you kind of make a sad, worried look, scared look, the dragon will look mean. And then if you make a mean look, then the dragon will, will look kind of scared. So it's like the dragon's scared of you when you're making a mean face, and then when you're scared of the dragon, the dragon makes a mean face. But also, because of the, 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 you know, dragons, I like to make them, you know, with a longer snout, with lots of teeth, the more teeth, the better. But if you make them face in this way, then you run into the nose and you kind of got to go over this bump and it, you know, you got this, you got this anatomy to contend with. But if you make it reverse, then you've got way more room. You can actually fit some flames kind of shooting underneath the ears. And then the same thing with the hairline here. Like Brian has a nice receded hairline, so I can get that horn <laughs> coming way, sweeping back. And uh, but but uh, well, she has a nice, you know, full hairline, so just doesn't have quite as much uh, as much room. But if you make it go in the opposite direction, now, now you got plenty of room. For this giant uh, horn. Okay, so I got some. Uh got some pink on there I did some shadows with some red I did the inside of his mouth with some red and then I and then I, uh, I shadowed her eye and her nostril a little bit with the black and then I just throw in on the highlights now it looks like oh man you're throwing this on so fast and you're not really explaining what you're doing but but it, it's no different than uh, like if I just did it pink and then just started outlining it with black uh, it's kind of the same thing so I'm not really worried about so much what the texture is, what the positions are of these shadows, and, and it, that it goes perfectly right. It's just making it a little more richer, a little bit more textured, a little bit more, it got a little more range. If it's got light pink and then dark pink and then white and then dark, and that's just the base, then I think it's going to come out looking nicer overall. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, if, if I can just speak just for a second on on the uh, on the color theory that we use, like we always use it, instead of doing. Maybe I can explain it like this. I'm gonna do a green dragon, right? 
on either side of the green on the color wheel, you got yellow on one side and blue on the other, right? Yellow and green make blello. <laughs> yellow and blue make green. So, so, so to determine what I'm going to use, uh, highlighting and shadow. Well, the the yellow is much brighter than the blue, so I'll do the highlights with the yellow, and I'll do shading with the uh, with with the dark blue. Of course, I can always do the shading with dark green and darker tones. Like Brian shaded the pink with red, which is a darker tone. Basically, pink is light red. So yeah, you can do your shadow and your highlighting with darker tones of the same color, but you can always match. If, you, if I'm gonna do an orange dragon, why not do the highlights in yellow? Because, because the colors are next to it, you know, right adjacent to it on the color wheel, of course it's gonna blend well. Yellow makes a great highlight for orange, and red makes a great shadow for orange. But then when you get to purple, you're like, oh, well, if I wanna make a purple dragon, Okay, I guess I could shade with this dark blue, but I can't shade with red. Oh, I'll just, I'll just mix up and go to the next tone. I'll highlight with pink or highlight with this neon orange on top of this red. Oh yeah, we were doing purple, weren't we? You can't, you can't do the highlights with red, but you can do the highlights with pink. Or you can do the highlights on purple with the light blue. You guys get it? Are you following me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just rewind the video. <laughs> okay, now I got a nice outline here. Open your eye and look up. I'll do a. Okay, I got some outline on there. I put a little texture up into the horns there to give it a little serration. Now I guess I'm going to do the uh, the teeth. I'm going to make them really long and spiky. Are any of these dragons in your new book? What new book? The new book that's the really cool yet? one that comes with the DVDs. Ah. <laughs> Um, uh, we got a couple. A, yeah, there's a full face red dragon in there. I think they call it the, the green. Beast. Yeah, there's a couple dragons. Yeah. Green full face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a fire breathing dragon. Flames coming out of the kid's nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fire sneezing dragon. <laughs> I heard you're trying to do stuff different. I, for that. I heard a new word last night. <laughs> a snart. Yeah. <laughs> Snarts half sneeze. It's <laughs> <laughs> not funny, I've done that. And while I got the white loaded up, I'm going to do some more highlights too. Like snart, that's so funny, I never heard of that. And now it's on the tape. <laughs> Everybody to see who wasn't here. You just remember everything you say goes on tape. Right, spoiler. Spoiler alert. Anybody watch 30 Rack? Spoiler alert. <laughs> Alright, open your eyes again, look up. Okay. I got some white highlights on there. Now I'm going to do some shadows on the teeth. Okay, then got to put some glitter on there. Absolutely. 
and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stick the back of my brush into my glitter container. Um, I like a I like the hologram glitter, I like the gold and the silver hologram because it kind of reflects every color in the rainbow, so it matches all the face paints. So if I get a silver or gold hologram and mix them together, so I got the silver that matches the silver jewelry, the gold that matches gold jewelry and then the hologram matches every other color in the rainbow, well then I only need one glitter. But if you're a tackle tar like me, you're gonna get every color glitter anyway. But this is, this, I, I just realized that this is encouraging for, uh, for beginner face painters. You don't have to get this tackle box. You can just get this simple kit. Yep, I got, I got my glitter, I got my water cup, I got uh, my Q-tips. You know, I, I use these for erasers, for disposable lipstick applicators, for uh, painting around. If she if she had like a cut on her or something like that, I could paint around it with this, and throw it away, and then Is that a miniature continue. Or is it cut? No, it's cut. Okay. Cut in half. Uh, if you get the Q-tips brand, Q-tips or cotton buds, you can break them in half. But uh, if they're cheap, then you got to cut them. You can also clean your ears with them. Did you have a question? <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, that glitter, I, I heard uh, glitter is the venereal disease of face painting. Uh, once you get it, you can't get rid of it or something like that. It, uh, it's, not, it's not hard getting it to stick. It'll stick on your greasy forehead. Um, a lot of times I'll sponge it, sponge it on first, and then while it's wet, you can roll the glitter on, and then you're not messing with the line work. It was just an afterthought on this one, I was like, oh, I should put some glitter on. And her face is already dried, so I just kind of like applied a little bit of pressure on there. I don't have to do anything to get it to stick on my brush, you know, because it, it's stuck on. I didn't get it wet or anything. Glitter sticks pretty much everywhere. Oh, sorry. Glitter happens. Yes. That's a, that should be a t-shirt, right? I saw, yeah, somebody was, what? So it has a right? cling to it, too. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, look at the wait before you put your glasses back on. I'm gonna do the camera real quick. Oh yeah, yeah. And it, now, now make like, can you can you lift your eyebrows and make like like really sad, like oh no, like sad, worried and scared. That makes the dragon look scarier. But then if you if you do a mad look and go, there you go, that's an intense dragon. Then it looks sadder. Okay, now if Elmo had a pet dragon, then then it would look how, like this. How about um, how about that? How about that black tribal dragon? That really, really super quick one. No. Is it yeah. black? Black. Oh, it's the, yeah, but it's did thin. you pick black because it won't come off? No, because no, it matches red? your outfit. Red. red and black. Red and black. All right, let's see. She wants colors that'll stain that won't come off for weeks. Don't we all? Let's do. Okay, I got it. <coughs> Make an Elmo dragon. Hmm? <laughs> Make an Elmo dragon. Elmo dragon. Elmo dragon. I think Cookie Monster was that was going in the right direction though. It looks like at least he sounds like a dragon. Yeah. You know. Uh, okay. yeah, I'm just gonna take a second to check out her face, cause, cause that's a, another thing I do when I get this request here. You, you know how you look up at clouds and, and then see shapes of like animals and stuff like that, or the beer animals when the suds are are raining down on the sides <laughs> of your mugs after you just pounded it, and it can make, sometimes it can make little like animals and shapes like that. I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at the minute curves in her face and see if I can see if I can find this dragon in her face here. No, it's old. Okay. Oh, sometimes, sometimes I can't find a good dragon in their face, and I'm not saying that he can't. I'm sure he will. But sometimes they get a real, real small face, and sometimes, uh, you know, like they got their cheeks, but they don't have any f forehead. They got this little furry forehead thing here, so you can't fit anything here. And then they're just their features are so big, and they they don't have any chin. They get this little tiny chin. They got cheeks, and it's, you're just like, where am I supposed to fit this thing? All I got is. All you got is two cheeks, eye, eye, nose, mouth here. There's no, there's no place to paint on this, on this poor thing. Uh, 
I found out that just like, uh, just like when the girls look in the mirror and go, lipstick, glitter, check, check, I'm out of here, thank you. And then you're just like, really? You're kidding. You, the, those fish look like, like something, you know, like a couple wet socks, you know. But she didn't even look at that. She just looked at the li lipstick and, and the eyeshadow, and she was gone. Same with the dragon. If you paint that cool head, I would say if you're going to practice dragons, don't worry so much about the feet. And the, and, the, and the way the wings spread out and stuff, just get that head cool, you know, make that eye really mean or cute if, if you're painting a cute dragon, but eye mean, spikes coming out of there, teeth, flames, you get that head right, put that on the cheek, and then, well, it doesn't matter that the body's all up in the hairy forehead here, and uh, maybe the wings kind of covering up the, the the legs up here, and then you got this big sausage tail coming around with a heart on the end of it, and that's way out of proportion and dumb looking because it's short and it looks like they're not even gonna look at that. They're gonna look at the head. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, that's awesome. They're not. They're gonna just totally totally bypass the rest of it. So. Work on those heads. Uh, how do you work on your heads? Uh, I don't know, the way, the way that Nick and I like to do it is, uh, well, I don't know, we copy stuff. Copied it off of the internet. You just Google dragon, and then we'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really cool dragon head, and we'll copy it. Uh, if you guys aren't really good at copying, uh, tracing paper works great. Um, I, I'll take some tracing paper, f uh, find, it, find a dragon where maybe you can just find an outline. Maybe you can type Google image dragon outline or dragon uh, ink drawing or something like that. Um, to take a, maybe you can crank up the saturation or something like that. Uh, print that. Print that out and then trace it and maybe trace it like five times till you're sick of tracing it. And then when you're done with that, then copy it five times. And by the time you get done copying it, you'll notice every time you copy it that you're looking at the picture less and less and less. You're like, yeah, 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 the eyes go like this and the nose like this and then, oh yeah, the corner of the mouth goes like this and you're, so, and you're looking at it less and less and then pretty soon you can trace it five times, you copy it five times, take the picture away, just get your piece of paper and draw that bad boy. You'll have it down and if you can draw it, you already know how to use your face painting tools so then you can paint it. And that's, that's like everything. I, you can do that with your skulls and your superheroes and your what it, logos and whatever it is that you have a real hard time doing. Well, get some tracing paper. Your, your dolphins suck. Your, your, your unicorns look like balloon giraffes or something like that. Well, then get, get a really nice picture of a, a unicorn that you like and trace it and trace it. And it's that muscle memory, just like working out at the gym. You know, and you hadn't worked out in months and months and months and months, and then you start pumping some iron again. Your muscles go, "Oh yeah, I used to do this. I know how this goes." And they'll they'll pump up a lot faster after you've uh, already got that muscle mass. So same way with your your drawing, your pencil, your uh, your your painting hand, man. And once you once you paint it a few times, you'll get it. Like your first butterfly sucked. I know it did. Mine did. <laughs> Everybody's first butterfly sucked, but hey, man, now you guys are like, oh, butterfly, boop, 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 boop. Piece of cake, because you painted how many of them? 100, 200, 300,000 butterflies? Well, of course your butterflies rock. And your dragons stink? Well, how many dragons have you painted? A thousand? Four, five dragons, but they, they all they were terrible. It's like, well, I don't know. Practice, practice your dragons. He or she who paints most paints best. Uh, there's a there's a book right now about 10,000 hours. If you want to be an expert at anything, you have to do it for 10,000 hours. So I'm like, okay, I, 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 I've heard it before. Oh, you and Nick are expert face painters. So I broke it down. I'm like, how many hours is 10,000 hours? I figured it out. It's about 40 hours a week for five years. I'm like, oh, no wonder we became experts because we had a full-time job face painting every day in the theme parks for five years. Next, 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 40 hours, eight hours a day, five days a week for five years. Now, we've been doing it for 12 years, so teaching, doing gigs, all that stuff, doing it even more, but then you take your average face painter, they're not doing it full-time. Like, let's say you were doing it 20 hours a week. Anybody in here paint 20 hours a week? Let's say you were. If you did it 20 hours a week, 
He would be an expert in less than 10 years of painting 20 hours a week. Let's say you're painting 10 hours a week. Anybody painting 10 hours a week? Only 20 years to become an expert face painter at 10 hours a week. Anybody painting less than that? Well, you can do the math. Here's the good news. You don't have to be an expert because your job isn't actually face painting. Face painting is your gimmick. Your job is... Making people smile. Making people smile. Making everybody's day. Making that kid get, get a, a, attention that day, right? Because usually that kid is ignored. It ignored even, even in conversation. You're talking to the adult and you're ignoring the kid. Uh, but when you're painting the kid up, now all of, a sudden, all of a sudden everybody's paying attention. Look at that princess, look at that tiger, look at that dragon. And they're getting the positive attention, they're getting the pictures, they're getting the smiles, their family is smiling too, and you guys gotta remember, you're there to make their day too, not just by painting the kid and making him happy, you're there to make mom happy too, because she's coming up to you with her problems, and dad's coming up and he's got problems too, but don't forget what your job is, it's to put a smile on his face, they're coming to you for help, and not just painting the kid. They want, they want, they want a smile too, they're coming to you for that. They're coming to you because you are shining like a, like a beacon, ra a beacon radiating with light, and they're feeling a little down, a little dark, so they're coming to you for, for that help. Don't forget what your job is. Now, face, face painting, this is your gimmick. This is, it's almost like a spiritual healing job. When you paint the kid, they are healed spiritually because they're, get, they're getting that attention. They're feeling that love. They're feeling special. They're, and not that they aren't special, of course, every single one of them are, but sometimes they don't feel special. But you're, you're helping them to remember, to remember that they are special, and you're helping their family as well, and they are spiritually held, and you're doing it, and it's making you feel good about yourself. Therefore, you are healed. And then everybody they come running into, I don't care if they're going to the 7-Eleven or the store, or they're going to the, through the toll, and they got their face painted, you're making those people stay too. They're like, whoa, what's going on? Are you guys going to a party or something? Yep, going to a party. That's where we're going. Yep. What are you guys like wrestlers? <laughs> yes. yes. The world's most out of shape wrestler. That's me. <laughs> or, the, or the guy at the 7 Eleven. Oh my God, I thought you were going to rob me. Yes, you can have 10 on what? Pump four? Yes. 10 on pump four. Yes, go ahead. You know, you made his day, and then he's gonna say, "Hey, this guy came in. I, he came in all in rush. His face is all pain, all break down. He came in, and I was reaching for that button, and he said, "Can I have ten on pump four, please?" And I was like, "Oh my God, I, you really made that guy's day." And then his buddy's laughing at him, like, "Ah, you thought you were gonna get robbed." Spiritual healing. That is our job. Face painting is your gimmick. Oh, there are spiritual healing balloon twisters and massage therapists and. Doctors and lawyers too, but I don't know. Everybody here is uh, is one of those kind of healers. So keep that keep that in mind at all times. Thank you very much. I agree. What do we got? Red dragon. You are healed. <laughs> Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh the big foot and the cool. Oh, it's like a. Skull kind of dragon. Oh, you guys got to see the character on this one. Sweet. My pleasure. Walk this way. Oh, wait a minute. Walk this way. No, no. I'll just put it down the road here. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, we've got time for one more. Who wants it? Do we have time for one more? Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Somebody coming up? She's it. She has Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Hi. How are you? I'm All right. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited too. All right, Nance, what kind of dragon we paint on you? Whatever your desire is. Woo! That's my favorite one. Whatever you want. That's what I like to do. The flapping wing eyebrow. One of the practical dragons, right? You guys want practical, right? Okay. Flapping wing, eye brown dragon. Okay, and we'll do it in five minutes. What color dragon have we done? 
Five, five minutes or less? Uh, well, she's got some orange, she's got some green. And a little bit of purple. Let's do a let's do a purple dragon. That's good. Five minute purple dragon that flaps his her her wings when she shakes her eyebrows. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go right over the bridge of her nose here with the purple, and I'm kind of building. I'm kind of building my dragon. I went over the nose, that's kind of like the backbone. So then I'm gonna fatten him up a little bit. You know, so this is his, his tail, and this is his neck. So I'm just fattening up that tailbone there. That, so I pretty much did this line like that. That's gonna be his backbone, but then I wanted to fatten it up, so I made his body a little bit fatter, and I made his neck and his tail a little bit fatter. And then I'm gonna do, some wings, and I'm just doing the, the wings coming out from the body, and then kind of fanning out here with the, the fingers of the wings, like that. And then I'm gonna do the tip of his tail, a little, little fork here, and I'm gonna do his head like Like that, pretty much, kind of, kind of doing like an alligator with spikes coming out of it here. So, all right. Then I'm going to do the inside of his wings. I'm going to do a little darker purple. And I'm gonna do uh, some dark purple. Oh yeah, let me do his leg too. I'll make his I'll make his leg like curled up underneath. And there's his. I'll do his thigh, which his thigh is gonna be like a an elongated oval. And then I'm gonna do his calf, his bottom leg here. And see how you got your calf here? It's kind of round, and then it kind of straightens out and goes a little bit skinnier. And then I'll do his foot. Bless you. Thank you. Here we go. And then I'll do some some highlights. I'll do his teeth and his eye. And I'll do a couple spikes. I'm doing some spines down his back and I'll put some teeth on his, uh, like claws on his, uh, on his wings. And I'll do a little highlight too, all the way down his back. And I'll highlight his leg too so it shows up a little bit more. Do the top of his thigh and the top of his calf. And then I'm going to outline him. Can you guys see him? Nope. Too far back. OK. Well, since this is my last dragon, if you guys could stick around, maybe, maybe we could all meet down there at that back wall. If you guys are still here and got a dragon on your face, so everybody can take a picture of it. And I brought my camera, too. And if Nick didn't take a picture of you, I'm sure I'd love to get a picture of you and stick it on our wall of shame. <laughs> Three minutes? Take your time. That's all? That's all I've been painting or that's all we got left? Okay.
And I'll do some uh, glitter. And we'll call it we'll call it a quick dragon. And this one is the purple terror. Purple people later. We already did a night terror, so this is purple paper later. The purple nightmare. Oh, oh. there it is. How's that? Hi. Oh, wow. And then shake your eyebrows. Squirt bottle. And Look, he's flying. <laughs> <laughs> you said what? You set up fire. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you very much. We're going to be uh, over in the dealer room painting too in about 15 minutes. So if you guys want to join us over there and get your face painted, if you didn't get a chance today, we'd be more than happy to get you. Hey, how about that for the first face paint class? That's a lot of fun. Yeah. And hey guys, uh, keep in mind, uh, the Wolf Brothers are doing a class on Monday.